out today getting our hardneck garlic planted finally. It is December 2nd. It's a beautiful day. It's plus two degrees Celsius here in Newfoundland and Labrador. It's Lance's birthday and I'm putting him to work but he doesn't mind. So it's just a nice day to be outside. So we're a little bit late getting our garlic in as per usual. It's pretty standard for us. Um, you know I've done it in sort of snowstorms before in the past to be honest. We probably should have gotten it in just a couple of weeks ago. Um, ideally you want to get your garlic in the ground in a northern climate um, several weeks before your ground freezes completely um, because you will actually have some root growth before it goes dormant for the winter and then starts to grow again in the spring. So we're getting it in today. I'm going to show you where we're planting it this year and why we're planting it here. It's not where I wanted to put it but we had a little change of plans which is pretty standard for homesteading. Um, Lance is taking down some fencing because we also have another little change that we're doing this year or next year. So we'll chat about that a little bit. So let's get started. All right so one of the things Lance is working on is taking down this fence because we no longer have chickens in here. This whole building is coming down. This is our original chicken coop and we've used it in recent years as a chicken brooder for our meat chickens in the spring. So it's coming down because this over here is a little bit of a garden area. So we're going to put gardens right across here. Um, so I'm hoping that it's going to be a really nice sort of part of our oasis, I'm going to call it. Um, so this will be all gardens and then up here is the potager. So it'll all kind of tie into each other. So this is what he's busy doing on his birthday. Gotta love it, hey? Well, Wife puts you to work on your birthday. Work's gotta be done. <laughs> exactly. It's your birthday or not. That's homestead life. Exactly. Exactly. It's a beautiful day for it, so. I don't it mind. is. So, we're actually gonna dig up a little bit of this soil that was in the chicken run and put it in that garlic bed because, you know, it's full of chicken poop and it's composted and oh, yeah. it's just great soil. It's years and years of good compost. Yeah. So this area I think is going to be really good for a garden. Like awesome. So that'll be a spring thing. So, so it's been like composting and been dug up and taken about eight years now. Yeah. We've been doing that. Yeah. Exactly. So it's nice. I know. I know it's exciting. Brown gold. Yipper. So over here is where I was going to put the garlic this year. So in these beds, this was the Oops, this was the plan, but because we're going to be tearing down this building in the spring, we kind of opted not to put our garlic here because we may have to get a little tractor in too to kind of dig up all this area for new gardens. So we just want to kind of leave it empty. So we decided to put our garlic right behind here in the potager garden. So it's going to go in one of these beds. I actually didn't order enough garlic to put in two beds. I thought I did, but no. I have 189 cloves of garlic to plant and that's it. So that'll fit into one bed. I did some calculations, the spacing and stuff. So as you can see, the soil in this sunk down quite a bit. Uh, because we did it kind of hygge culture style, we have like sticks and stuff in the bottom of this. It just settled all down, so we're going to top all this up before we get our garlic in. So the first thing we're going to put in here is seaweed, and then we're going to put some of the compost it, uh, from the chicken run, compost it manure, and then some more soil, and then we'll get planting. And we got our little farm babies. We're just learning <laughs> the ropes running away. They've only been allowed out for a few days now. So they're just trying to figure it all out. We had to get them fixed before we let them out on the farm.
have our bed amend it with um, chicken, compost it, soil, manure mix, I guess we'll say, some seaweed, and we took some garden soil from our lower garden that we're getting rid of. Um, well, actually, we might not completely get rid of it. We may get a high tunnel for down there, but nonetheless, we just borrowed some soil from there for this year, uh, just for ease. So our bed is topped up nicely. It's about, it's just a couple of inches from the top of, uh, top edge, I guess, but that's going to allow for some mulch after because mulching in winter is a, a very important part of growing hard neck garlic. So we are, <laughs> I'm just laughing at the cats. We have these two barn cats that are out, you know, it's their first days out. So they're just having a ball. Um, so we have three types of garlic this year. I'm only doing 189 bulbs. That's what I count, or cloves, that's what I count it. Usually we do double that, or we have in the past. Um, but anyway, that's it, that's, that's gonna work. Um, I have a lot of garlic freeze dried from this year, so I anticipate we'll still have a lot of that next year. Um, so three varieties, I usually do more than that. I usually like to do um, quite a few more varieties, but we just whittled it down to three this year. I tried to be a little more, I guess, frugal with um, buying garlic to grow. Um, haven't gotten to the point yet. Hello, come see. There's a babies. This is Rogue. There's one of our new farm babies. Hey, hey baby. Um, so we haven't gotten in, we haven't gotten smart enough, I'll say, to grow enough garlic to um, have enough to grow the following year from our own stock. That's where I want to go, but I just never seem to... Um, we've done so much change over the last few years that I just haven't gotten there, but we will get there because that's the ultimate goal. So we have music garlic, and we got all our garlic bulbs this year from John Boy Farms. So I have music, and I have Majestic, and we have Big Boy. Um, looks like great garlic overall, and I'm pleased with it. We ordered some from John Boy Farms last year, and it was really good garlic as well, so we were pleased. So I went back there again this year. All right, so we're gonna get started. I'll show you how I plant my garlic. It's There's probably different variations, but it's, uh, I mean, it's a pretty basic thing to plant, it really is. So I'll turn the camera down and I'll show you what I'm doing. All right, so my plan is here. I, this bed is four by eight, so I did some measurements. I should be able to get my 189 cloves in here, no problem. It's kind of crammed, but that's okay. Your spacing needs to be about four to six inches apart. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to space my rows about six inches apart. And within my rows, I'm going to space my cloves about four inches apart. So I'm looking at about six inches between rows because I want to be able to get my weeding tool, just my hand weeding tool, in there, um, in between. So that should give me enough space. I'm going to mention, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, um, on seed packets, because this kind of bothers me all the time, but on seed packets, you know how there's um, plant the seed spacing and plant spacing and row spacing. So the row spacing is always massive. It's always like 12, 18, 24, 36 inches. Most of the time, generally speaking, that row spacing is put there or that row spacing was determined, I guess, from big equipment uh, needs, I guess, on a farm. So if you're using firm uh, tractor implements for your farming, you know, your type of farming, then you need that particular spacing to get the implements in there for, you know, tilling and um, weeding and whatever you have to do, hilling up and that kind of thing. So that's not really a realistic spacing for a small scale home gardener. So just keep that in mind, especially if you're new to gardening, your spacing really, for the most part, your row spacing can be what your plant spacing is. So, you know, for garlic, for example, it says you can plant garlic cloves four to six inches apart. So your space in between the rows 
really only has to be four to six inches apart as well. The only reason I'm putting it to six, so I'm kind of going to the max, is because I want to be able to get my little hand weeder in there. So it's just for ease of using my particular scale of tools. If I wanted to use a much bigger weeder, um, I might want to go to 10 inches apart. So just some food for thought when you're planning out your garden and you're trying to garden and grow a lot in a small space like I am here. Hi, oh here's Storm. I'm gonna show you Storm. This is our other cat, not as cuddly this one. Hey baby, look, this is Storm. This is our female kitty cat. Hey, they're little beauties. Sorry, I like our cats. So I don't get really particular about how straight my lines are and that kind of thing. I don't run lines like maybe I might when I get my new bigger garden going and but I don't typically especially in a small bed like this. I'm not worried if my rows are a little bit crooked. I'm really not. So I'm just going to I started doing some holes. So I have a um, just a little garden stake that I use to make my holes. So the garlic cloves should go fairly deep, um, around four to five inches deep. So I just use a little round garden stake to put my holes in before I plant it. So I'm gonna put all my holes in throughout the whole bed um, with the spacing that I want, and then I will drop all my cloves in at that point and get them buried up. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get our garlic in the ground. So this is your garlic clove. So I basically took the big bulb of garlic and broke it all apart um, into cloves. So that's what you plant when you're planting hard neck garlic. So you're going to plant it with the pointy side up. And this is the side that's going to grow the roots in the bottom. So you're just going to put it down in the hole like that. Um, some people do put some fertilizer in the hole as well, but because I use the chicken compost and stuff, I'm not going to bother. Um, I'm going to top dress this in the spring, but that's just my preference. Um, most advice is to put some fertilizer down in the hole, uh, but I don't typically, so it's all good. Um, so yeah, this is what's going to grow into your big garlic bulb next year. All right, so we're just gonna stick them right down on the hole. Like I said, four to five inches down. And you know, there's all different sizes. That's a really small one. That one's not gonna grow into as big of a uh, bulb, typically. So I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna try to keep my um, varieties a little bit separate, but uh, I usually end up <laughs> forgetting and, or, misplacing what I have written down or something like that. That's a big giant clove there. The worst thing about this time of the year is that the ground is actually pretty cold. So your fingers get pretty cold doing this. I could put on gloves, but there's just something about gardening without gloves on. That's kind of nice. Get to feel the soil. I like that. So some of my cloves probably aren't going to be down quite deep enough, but it's not that big of a deal because I am going to top this up with mulch, right? So I'm going to put a couple of inches of mulch on this and I don't always take off my mulch. I might take some of it off, but if the garlic kind of pushes up through it in the spring, I just leave it just an extra layer of protection and nourishment as it decomposes, especially the, the uh, leaves and stuff. It attracts all kinds of good bugs and worms and stuff like that. I've got a few that the paper came off of a little bit. I don't usually plant those, but you know what? They're all going in unless the paper is completely off, but the paper kind of acts as a natural protection for the bulb. All right, so I got the garlic planted. Now we need to mulch this for the winter. It needs to be kind of tucked away, nice and cozy for the winter time. So we put a nice thick layer of mulch on it. I do um, 
a layer of leaves first. So we're going to go over and see if we can find some maple leaves because that's my preference. Um, I know we got lots of birch, but we do have a section of our property that does have a lot of maple trees. So I'm thinking I can kind of fill up the trailer with leaves if I can get enough over there. We'll see. Um, so yeah, leaves. And then we put hay. If we had straw, we'd prefer to use straw. Uh, straw is really difficult to find in Newfoundland where I'm at. So we use hay. Now hay has seeds in it versus straw, but um, it is what it is. So that's what we're going to use. And I mean, if you have grass clippings or any other organic matter, I mean, we could put probably four inches of leaves. If I can get enough, maybe I'll just do leaves. But I like to do a little bit of hay or something as well, just for some extra insulation for the winter. And then we put a layer of cardboard over ours and just anchor it down with some logs or whatever. Um, we have you, well, we have to put something over the mulch because we're in a very windy area. We get pretty significant winds here in the fall and winter, um, especially on this particular property. It's like a wind tunnel. So our mulch would never stay on this garden if we didn't anchor it down. So I've seen some people do like netting and staple it to the beds. I've done that myself, but I find the cardboard works better than anything else. So we just put sheets of cardboard over the top and anchor it down and usually we have no trouble with our mulch. So that's what we're going to do now and then we're all done. Then it's tucked away for the winter and it'll grow up in the spring. Awesome. This stuff is just great to compost. Makes a beautiful garden amendment when composted. Look at that. Beautiful leaves, hey? All right, we're gonna see how far that goes in mulching the garden bed. So ideally, we should use um, shredded leaves, but these leaves are already starting to decompose and they're really wet, so I'm not going to put them through any kind of shredding process today. Um, I've used whole leaves before, there's really no issue. It's just that a lot of sources will tell you that they need to be shredded. Yeah. I kind of go outside the norm quite a bit. And you'll kind of get that with gardeners. Like everybody sort of has um, their own opinion and their own unique way of doing things and what's worked for them. Um, so you will get some variation and that's really why. Um, there's not one set way to do things. So whole leaves it is. Um, most people will take their mulch off of their garlic in the spring. What I'll probably end up doing I'll probably just gauge it based on how things go. If this sort of breaks down a little bit over the winter and the garlic starts sprouting through it, then I'm just going to leave my mulch there. And that's what usually happens, to be honest. Um, I'll probably end up taking the hay off because I am putting hay over this. I'll probably take the hay off, hay off in the spring and just leave the leaves and let, let it sprout up through the leaves and let the leaves kind of stay there as a mulch. If I have to break it apart a bit in the wind, in the summer, I will, or in the spring, no problem. But if I find my garlic is not sprouting well through these big leaves, then I'll just take the mulch up. It's not a big deal, not at all. So just kind of wing it and see how it goes. But generally speaking, my mulch stays on all season and the garlic grows great. So I'm gonna head down and find some hay and some cardboard and we're gonna finish this bed off because it is, Probably an hour till dark now, and Lance's birthday, so we got some really yummy steaks he picked up at one of the local farms yesterday. So 
we're gonna have a wonderful supper tonight. So that's it. Let's get it finished up. All right, this should be enough hay because I got a nice, decently thick layer of leaves. off for now. So the cardboard doesn't need to cover it completely. So I'm not worried about like the holes in this cardboard because it's not acting as a weed barrier. It's merely going to hold the mulch down. All right, I'm just gonna toss whatever I can find on top of this. I actually probably should have took some bigger sheets of cardboard, but this is all I could find, so this is gonna work. So I'm just gonna toss what I can to hold it down. That'll work, and we need a little something for here. All right, we're done. Garlic is planted for the year, thank goodness. So, as you can see, we just threw whatever kind of heavy stuff we could find on the bed just to keep that cardboard and mulch down. I wish I would have had bigger sheets of cardboard, that's what I usually do, but we've used a lot of that for sheet mulching and stuff, so this is pretty much the size that I have, so it's not ideal. I probably could have put netting down actually in this scenario, but um, I think this will work, especially once, you know, snow gets on top of that and stuff and kind of packs it all down. So we'll keep an eye on it anyway. If we get any big windstorms and the mulch starts to come off, we'll intervene and fix it up. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for checking in today and following along, and we will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.